And that does it for this 5 o'clock edition of Eyewitness News. We thank you for watching. I'm Diana Williams. And I'm Tim Fleischer. Eyewitness News at 6 starts now. This is Eyewitness News, the news leader, with Bill Ritter and Liz Cho. Scott Clark with sports and Sam Champion with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Now, Eyewitness News at 6. Tonight, protests says hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers may be at risk of losing their driver's license. It's all part of the state's plan to guard against terrorism. And racial profiling in New Jersey are the steps the state is taking to guard against it working. And good evening to you. Bill is off tonight. We begin with those driver's licenses. And as many as 300,000 drivers, including many illegal immigrants, are at risk of having their license suspended. That's because the state is using new technology to verify Social Security numbers. And today, immigrant and labor groups protested, claiming the move is unfair. Art McFarland's in Lower Manhattan with more. Art. And Liz, hundreds of driver's licenses have already been suspended. That number could go much, much higher over the next few months as the DMV enforces a 1995 state law which simply says that you have to have a social security number to get a driver's license in New York State. They came out to protest the state crackdown they say threatens their now? livelihood. Why do you want it? Now he says. When do you want it? Now. The protesters claim to represent hundreds of thousands of immigrants who have lost or could soon lose their driver's licenses. I don't have social security. That's, uh, that's the problem. That's the point. And letters like this from the New York State Department of Motor Vehicles are demanding that some motorists verify the social security numbers they already submitted to get their driver's licenses. Ray Fernandez is DMV commissioner. There are hundreds of thousands of people that are roaming around uh, in, uh, currently uh, in New York State with licenses, photo licenses issued uh, under fictitious names, fictitious addresses, uh, using fictitious social security numbers. And at a hearing by the State Assembly's Transportation Committee, the DMV presented stacks of fraudulent documents illegally obtained driver's licenses and photos of alleged offenders. But the hearing was called for by legislators who represent large numbers of immigrants. The bottom line is uh, to try and change, to try and create legislation that will uh, prevent this from going on. Many of these people who depend, all around their lives depend on a driver's license to go to work, to go to the hospital, to go to school, to go shopping, so the impact is going to be tremendous. But the DMV efforts have the support of some families who lost loved ones on 9-11. 18 of the 19 hijackers had fraudulent driver's licenses. Advances in computer technology since 9-11 have allowed the state to enforce this law. Now, some legislators want to create a law whereby you can get a driver's license with other documentation, like a green card. But that may be difficult to pass, considering the fact the 9-11 Commission has asked for strengthening laws against issuing driver's license to illegal immigrants. We're live in Lower Manhattan, Art McFarland, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. All right, Art, thank you very much. Well, there was a big drop at one Times Square, and it wasn't the New Year's ball. A huge piece of the building's facade came crashing down on the sidewalk below. The heavy slab of granite somehow became loose from the building, hit a scaffolding, and broke apart before landing on the sidewalk. Chunks hit two people, both suffered minor injuries. Workers were installing squares of the granite facade this morning when the piece became loose. Tonight, Golan Sippel, the man at the center of Governor McGreevy's scandal, denies there is another man. Sippel, who returned to his native Israel after the scandal broke, is denying a published report that he had an affair with a doctor from New Jersey. Sippel issued a statement today saying, quote, I believe that in a few days new lies will emerge, even worse than before. Lies and monstrous manipulations by the governor paving the way for his lawyers all to threaten me and to shut me up, end quote. Well, now to the politics of the scandal. Senator John Corzine has announced he will not press for a special election to replace Governor McGreevy, and that has many in New Jersey asking, what now? Jen Maxfield is in Woodbridge with that. Jen? Liz, this much is clear. New Jersey voters will not be electing a new governor until November of 2005. Nothing in New Jersey's constitution requires the governor to step down early, and McGreevy, who launched his political career from right here in Woodbridge, says he's not going to. 
Senator Corzine made his decision not to run for governor yesterday after a late afternoon phone call to McGreevy. Corzine reportedly said he was prepared to run this November, but McGreevy said that wouldn't be necessary. The governor said that he had no intention of leaving office any earlier than November 15th. That means there's no special election. Corzine's spokesman says the senator is independent, unwilling to bow to pressure from some Democratic Party bosses who want McGreevy out immediately. McGreevy said in a statement, quote, I appreciate Senator Corzine's decision and his consideration for my position and for the well-being of my family, end quote. State Democrats who have been encouraging McGreevy to stay in office say a special election this year would have cut voters out of the primary process. If we do it this way, the party bosses on the Republican side and the party bosses on the Democratic side will meet in a room and decide, well, it's going to be this candidate or that candidate, and then have an election. That's not quite democratic. Black lawmakers gathered in Trenton this afternoon had sharp criticism for the Democratic Party bosses, who they say cut them out of the process of choosing a candidate to replace McGreevy. Some state senators are so angry, they threaten to run their own candidate to oppose the Democrat next year. African American leaders and minorities in general have been excluded from a lot of the processes, not just under the governors, within our own party statewide. And that's the point we are making. It cannot happen again. Governor McGreevy was at work in Trenton today. His My close life. aides continue to it's insist that the allegations of sexual defense. harassment and corruption year, will not distract him from completing his agenda by November 15th. His work ethic is legendary, and um, he's just very happy to be back at work. The debate over McGreevy's successor has sparked new calls here in New Jersey to establish a lieutenant governor position. New Jersey is one of just eight states in the country that do not elect lieutenant governors, and supporters of the idea say that making this position available for voters to vote on would make for a smoother transition in the future. That's the latest live in Woodbridge, New Jersey. I'm Jen Maxfield, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Jen, thank you. Well, today we're getting a chance to see how police are planning to handle as many as 250,000 protesters during the Republican convention. The NYPD held an emergency drill at Floyd Bennett Field in Brooklyn today. With cadets playing protesters, officers had an opportunity to try out new training methods they learned over the last few months. As we reported exclusively on Eyewitness News yesterday, police are also tracking 56 radical protesters 24 hours a day. Today, Commissioner Ray Kelly declined to elaborate on those specific security plans. There's really you know, not so many secrets out there. You know, these groups are telling the world what uh, they can do, what they intend on doing. So, uh, you know, we, we think we have a lot of information. Police also practice using the equipment that will inspect underneath trucks in an attempt to thwart any potential truck bombers. As for the convention itself, we are learning more tonight about how the show, about the show the Republicans plan to put on. Their keynote speaker is a senator who, back in 1992, gave the keynote address at the Democratic National Convention. Political reporter Dave Evans is here now with more. Very interesting. Very interesting. There's two developments today, actually, on what we'll see inside Madison Square Gardens soon. First of all, we're getting some specifics on how Republicans will showcase New York City in kind of an unusual way. But first, the news that might worry some Democrats, that one of their own has agreed to take a prominent role at this Republican festival. On the night before the convention wraps up, a Southern Democrat will give the keynote address. Zell Miller of Georgia, a senator who 12 years ago at Madison Square Garden did Bill Clinton the favor of also giving the keynote address. But the world was changed as far as I'm concerned by 9-11. And I want a president now that's got a little grit in his crawl. According to Senator Miller, John Kerry just doesn't have that grit, and so he's backing Bush. And I think the fact that Zell Miller, a prominent member of the United States Senate, has said this is no longer a party that I feel comfortable in, says that they have forgotten the middle ground in their party. Eyewitness News has also learned details of how Republicans will highlight and remember 9-11. On another night, the Harlem Boys Choir performs, and Republicans plan to showcase New York with remote broadcasts from places like Times Square to capture the city's energy, and Ellis Island to highlight our immigrant past. As I said, it's the greatest city in the world, and it took Republicans to say that we can run this city effectively. So running around and doing uh, remote shots from throughout the city is just showcasing the best city in the world. Compared with Boston, Republican officials today said they want a more energetic and interesting convention, and they say New York City certainly helps with that goal. But a few already take exception 
to Republicans painting themselves as big fans of this overwhelmingly Democratic city. Well, if they really love New York in the Congress and in the White House, they'd be thinking of ways to get money here to make sure that we can continue to be a safe city. And just like the Republicans did in Boston, Democrats will have their own people here in the city trying to counter what is said inside the garden. Ten days to go. Just ten days <laughs> left before the party rolls in. Not much in. time to prepare. No. All right, David, thank you very sure. much. Well, as we continue on uh, with Eyewitness News, have cameras in police cars stopped racial profiling? We have a status report. And in tonight's extra, tens of millions in public funds now earmarked for park improvements in one borough. But residents there are furious. Find out why in tonight's extra. Tomorrow on Eyewitness News this morning, local community groups are getting high-tech help to keep track of quality of life issues in their neighborhood. Watch those stories and much more when we see you tomorrow morning on Eyewitness News this morning, beginning at 5. We're a thousand miles off course. They're looking for us in the wrong place. Guys, where are we? Lost premieres Wednesday, September 22nd, only on ABC. There is positive news tonight in New Jersey's fight to end racial profiling. According to a federal report, New Jersey State Police have made dramatic progress in ending profiling. Anthony Johnson is in Bloomfield with more on the reasons why. Anthony. Well, Liz, about six years ago, the New Jersey State Police became the nation's poster child when it came to the issue of racial profiling, actually going out and stopping motorists on the highway because of the color of their skin. But tonight they tell us that's no longer the case. According to the state police, a video like this one is proof that they have made significant progress to end the practice of racial profiling. Tapes like this one have been reviewed by federal monitors, and the last five reports from those monitors have concluded that there is no evidence of profiling. A consent decree with the Justice Department is set to expire in February of next year. But the state police is trying to let concerned citizens know when that decree runs out, the agency won't return to business as usual. There is nothing better than having a camera in a police car with a microphone so that every time the lights are cut on, the microphone is activated and the camera is activated. The state agreed to the federal monitor and consent decree following this shooting on the New Jersey Turnpike back in April of 1998 when four unarmed minorities were shot by state police during what should have been a routine traffic stop. Critics now admit the agency has made some progress but still needs to be closely monitored. We need to work to get some other independent monitoring mechanism in other than the federal government if the federal government is just not willing to do it anymore to assure that the state police continues on the path of reform. State police say the agency has become more diverse, has better accountability and the right technology to review a trooper's conduct. We didn't have um, a lot of protocols and processes for accountability uh, and review. We didn't have oversight uh, in, in, in place nearly to the extent that we have today. Now, the camera that you're looking at inside of one of the police cars here at Troop E in Bloomfield is one of the ways they're preventing racial profiling. Now, each police officer, when he gets ready to go out and do his duty out here on the roads, must check the system inside of that police car to make sure that camera is working. If it is not, they are told to move to another car where the system and the monitoring system can definitely work and is checked. Live in Bloomfield, New Jersey, Anthony Johnson, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Anthony, thank you. Checking Wall Street now. Stocks finished the day lower. Dow falling 42 points, closing at 10,040. The Nasdaq down 11 points, ending the day at 1820. And just ahead, spending your tax dollars, tens of millions of dollars, is about to be used for parks in one borough. But should residents there have a say on how that money is spent? It's tonight's Extra, and it is coming up next. And it's humid out there, but what about the weekend? Your forecast is on its way. Republican convention comes to New York City, but how will it affect your life? Watch Channel 7 Eyewitness News. From what's being said inside to what's going on outside, watch Eyewitness News. Coverage starts with a special one-hour Eyewitness News presentation Friday, August 27th. 
In tonight's Extra, we're going to take a look at a plan that for many residents in the Bronx held great promise. The deal ensured hundreds of millions of dollars be spent to transform all of the parks in the borough. But there are questions tonight over how the money will be spent and whether decisions are being made behind closed doors. It is the largest cash infusion ever. $200 million slated to drastically improve the parks throughout the Bronx. Residents who live near Echo Park claim it is in dire need of a facelift and hope officials will now spend a portion of the money here. They should go to the community and ask what parks really need it, you know, the community, because that's who lives there. But so far, that has not happened. When it comes to spending this money, park advocates say the public has pretty much been shut out. There's been absolutely no involvement by the public, no even asking. I mean, why aren't our elected officials, they work for us, why aren't they asking us what we want to see? And they're not. The money is a trade-off to Bronx residents. In exchange for the park improvements, the city will build a water filtration plant under the Majlu Golf Course in Van Cortland Park. It is Governor Pataki and legislative leaders who are in charge of all the improvements, and none would say what's on the list, though a spokesman for Senator Joe Bruno did say, quote, I think the projects will become clear when the list is done. That list was supposed to have been finalized last week, but there have been snags, including a disagreement over how to spend some of the money. I always say it ain't over till it's over. Bronx Assemblyman Jeffrey Dinowitz, a longtime opponent of the filtration plant, hopes the latest delay may help sink the project altogether. If somebody bombed Van Cortland Park and then said, oh, we're going to give you lots of money to fix it up and fix up other things, does that make it a good thing? I don't think so. Those involved with the negotiations claim the deal is still on track, but park advocates worry that this unique opportunity will be missed simply because they didn't seem to have a place at the negotiating table. It's an opportunity to make a renaissance of Bronx parks, but instead the deal is being made among politicians. And all of those involved in the negotiations claim they are close to a deal. An additional $43 million is also slated for upgrades to Van Cortland Park. So eventually when it does happen, it should be beautiful, yeah. hopefully. So mm, kind of park weather today, if you like it, kind of Yeah, warm I mean, sky-wise, it was yeah. good, but yeah. it was moving through the humid <laughs> air, just kind of swimming your way right. through it. You know, we've only been to the 90-degree mark once this summer and that was wow. like June 9th and we were 91 degrees and we're going to be close to hitting it tomorrow at 88 degrees there will be some areas in New Jersey that get to the 90 degree mark let's walk over to the wall we'll show you exactly what we've got in store for you over the next couple of days outside our sky shot from Brooklyn looking across into town there have been patches of clouds that have moved by right now thunder showers and thunderstorms are still in Pennsylvania with not much making it close to home there are some watches and warnings out with those storms in Pennsylvania we'll show them on, to you on the big radar and we know that overnight tonight one or two of them will make their way toward the coast Line, so we've got that, a scattered thunderstorm in the forecast tonight. Long Island water temperatures are down a bit, but you know what the weather was like last week. How could they not be? Uh, 70 to 73 degrees. New Jersey's numbers are from 74 to 76 degrees. Water temperatures are a little on the cool side. Temperatures are on the warm side. It's kind of a nice combination. Just keep your eye out for thunderstorms. 81 degrees outside right now. Relative humidity at 74 percent, and that's a lot of moisture in the air. That's why it feels so humid. West winds at 9 miles per hour, so there's a breeze at least now where there was not last night overnight. 83 degrees the top number on the day today. You would expect about 82, 83 to be the number this time of year. 65, 66 degrees, northern numbers, southern numbers from 71 to 72, and right through the middle of the region, we're carving out 74 to 71 degrees for a low temperature overnight tonight. Plenty of clouds and some scattered thunder showers kind of move through on the early side. High temperatures back in the 80s, but look at the 90s, very close. If we get more sunshine than we're bargaining for tomorrow, that number's going to go straight to 90, 91 degrees, even in the five boroughs. So the possibilities there, the heat and humidity certainly are. The clouds we showed you in the sky shot are those right there. They're running well ahead of the front. We've got two fronts to pass through in the next couple of days. The strongest one is Saturday, and it pretty much guarantees there will be some strong to severe thunderstorms at some point in the area Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. 88 degrees during the day tomorrow, hazy and humid, and where the thunderstorms are tomorrow is most likely in western and northern areas, but we'll keep our eye out for you in the afternoon. UV forecast is a 6 for the day tomorrow, which is right on the border of high and moderate. Make sure you're carrying some sun protection if you're out.
Early thunder, patchy clouds, 74 degrees. Tonight, warm and humid. Hazy sunshine tomorrow, 88. And the possibilities there, if there's a little, if there's a few hours of more sunshine, they will get to 90. Partly cloudy, warm and humid, 74 degrees. And that thick humidity lasts at least until Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, when the big front comes through with some very strong thunderstorms and drops those numbers down Saturday night for Sunday. Monday and Tuesday are beautiful days, and Sunday opens up nicely. If we can only shift our weekend. I know, just move you know? it a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Scott Clark's up next to sports. Well, let's we have the latest on a very successful day for the United States at the Olympics. Plus, coming up on Eyewitness News, Mike Cameron slams his way into the Mets record book. Plus, it's Thursday night. It's time for a leap of faith in the highlight zone. Oh. It's a great night to keep watching ABC7. Tonight at 8, don't miss Extreme Makeover Home Edition. And at 9, the ABC Movie of the Week Road Trip. Followed by Eyewitness News at 11. That's all right here on ABC7. Tonight's preview is sponsored by Lexus. The Sorrento here has got a V6 engine, plenty of car. This is Eyewitness News. Proud to support the Protect Our Children campaign. Have you seen Monica? ABC7 and your local Tri-State Ford stores urge you to protect our children. A dramatic symbol of the rebirth of Lower Manhattan today, the U.S. Postal Service officially rededicated the post office on Church Street. The building was heavily damaged when the World Trade Center towers collapsed right across the street nearly three years ago. Today, Postmaster General Jack Potter unveiled a special display of the flag that flew over the post office on 9-11. Very nice. Well, go USA. There's gold in the Mar Hills of yeah, Athens. Yes. yes. Olympic gold rush for the Americans in Greece today. 16-year-old Carly Patterson took the gold medal in women's all-around gymnastics. She is the first American since Mary Lou Retton to pull off that feat. How about that? At the pool, Michael Phelps won his fourth gold medal and sixth overall by capturing the 200-meter individual medley. Ryan Lochte took the silver. Elsewhere, Amanda Beard set an Olympic record in winning gold in the women's 200-meter breaststroke. Aaron Pearsall easily won the 200-meter backstroke, then was disqualified for an illegal turn, but following a protest, the decision was overturned. Pearsall picks up his second gold. Elsewhere, Natalie Coughlin won the bronze medal in the 100-meter freestyle. U.S. men's basketball team woke up in the final quarter, beat Australia 89-79, and the U.S. women's softball team, sixth straight shutout win, 7 nothing over Greece. And in case you missed it, Paul Hamm did nearly the impossible in the men's all-around last night. A fall during that vault left him buried in 12th place with just two events to go. But then he did rally on the parallel bars and came to the high bar in fourth place in dramatic style. Hamm was just about perfect. He scored 9.837, remarkably took that gold medal by 12 thousandths of a point, the closest margin ever. Do not get tired of looking at that. Baseball now. The Mets pitcher Victor Zambrano has suffered a flexor muscle strain in his pitching arm. An MRI revealed that today he will not throw for two weeks. But the Mets push on. Art Howe and company playing a day-night twin bill in Colorado. Mike Cameron bringing smiles in the opener for the Amazons when he blasted a Sean Estes pitch over the center field fence, a three-run shot. It was Cameron's 26th homer of the season, a record amount for a Met center fielder. Also a good day for Gerald Williams, the former Yankee, now Met collecting his third hit of the day in the fifth inning. A gap into the fence brings home Danny Garcia. Williams, yes, the triple. The Mets have the lead. Right now it's 10-3 in the ninth inning. The Mets on top. Tennis, anyone? 350 lucky kids got to get some words of wisdom from Wimbledon champion Maria Sharapova, part of the City Parks and Harlem Junior Tennis Program. Our own Jenna Wolf hosted that event, which is designed to bring tennis to some needy kids, and they did today. How about that? And finally, it's Thursday night. It is time once again to reach for the outreaches in sport. Yes, it is time to enter the highlight zone. Submitted for your approval. You've fallen down on the job. You can't possibly be serious. Quite the contrary. The ominous signs are there. Somebody's cast a spell on you. Your efforts to reach new heights have left you fallen and lost like a needle in a haystack. This slippery slope is getting ugly. Ew, what? The log jam is on. You're going up in smoke. Welcome to the highlight zone. I mean, that is just the cruelest cosmic payback ever. The underhanded world has taken over. 
You can't get out of your own way. You've pulled a real boner. We're definitely going to be getting into trouble tonight. You're up against the wall, yet lost in your ways. You want to throw it all away. That does it. It's time to blow your bubble back up. Go for it all and say the magic words. I have no fear. And just like that, you save the day and take what they had all away. It's on your next stop. Up ahead, the Highlight Zone. We made it. We made it. Thank you, Scotty. <laughs> World News Tonight with Peter Jennings is coming up next. We'll see you tonight at 11 o'clock. News tonight, politics post 9-11. John Kerry fights back against charges he lied about his war record. He accuses a veterans group of doing the president's dirty work. New ultimatum, the Iraqi prime minister gives a radical cleric another final warning, but the violence continues. Great expectations, Google makes its long-awaited debut on Wall Street. The stock soars, but the skeptics have not been silenced. Olympic centerfolds, the athletes competing for attention, using sex appeal to get maximum exposure. And our series, Beating Cancer, unlocking the mystery of the disease through DNA. Could it mean the end of chemotherapy for so many patients? From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Reporting tonight, Elizabeth Vargas. Good evening. As the country prepares to decide who should be president, a key issue this year is which man voters believe will be the best commander-in-chief.